Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. Our unique team helps small businesses grow by providing essential marketing expertise. Hello and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. My name is Bill Parmentier of W. Parmentier Photography. I'm Justin Kerr of Justin Kerr Design. I'm Alicia Piazza with Custom Marketing. And together we make up the the Marketing Marketing Essentials Essentials team. team. See, we get it right this time. We're good. (laughs) So, Justin, tell us what we're up to today. Uh, Today we have a guest with us on the podcast, uh, Peter Lang, who is a CPA who specializes in the unique accounting challenges faced by artistic professionals. Uh, Peter has 16 years of tax and accounting experience that he has put to use helping interior designers do their taxes and all the other financial duties that art school didn't teach them. Peter, where were you when I needed you when I graduated (laughs) art school? Peter moved to Boston in 2004 to pursue his master's in taxation degree and began working for a large accounting firm. I had an interesting experience there, which we'll cover during the interview. Then he moved to a small firm where he quickly became bored with the life of a traditional CPA and noticed that interior designers were consistently underserved by standard CPAs. So he decided to pursue his dream of running his own firm and settling down with his family and business in Rhode Island. And today we have him on the podcast to talk about all of that. So welcome, Peter. Yes, welcome. Yeah, thank you. This is awesome. So... I mentioned in your bio that uh, you had originally gone to work for a large accounting firm. And when we had talked uh, prior to the podcast, you you told me a little bit about your experience there, which I thought was pretty unique, but maybe not considering large accounting firms. So (laughs) tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, I moved to Boston to pursue my master's in tax and I got a job. I was all excited. I got a job at a, a large regional accounting firm in the tax department and um, after about a year I got promoted to uh, to a senior level so there was staff under me and quickly after that I got written up for the first time probably in my life I got in trouble um, and for a very vague reason that I couldn't get an answer to so when I pressed my bosses as to what the problem with my work performance was because I had just got promoted I, f- I was told that I helped the staff too much and wait, that wait, I sh- wait what? Yeah, I helped too much. So when I said, I'm confused because I just got promoted to a senior, and so the staff are coming to me for advice and help, and so I'm I'm not really sure what to do. And they said, what you need to do is go back and sit in your cube and put your head down and get get your work done is what you need to do. That was like the light bulb moment of, so then I was told I had 60 days to improve my behavior or my performance, or I was, you know, going to be let go. So I was like, okay, cool. I have 60 days to figure out how to get a different job because <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. This isn't going to work. I can't now, imagine a company saying you work too, you help too much. Is that typical? Uh, I think so. Now that I've, well, yeah, I mean, so the, um, after I left the turnover of the, the entire department, I would probably say, you know, had happened multiple times when I was catching up with people that I see at other, you know, events and stuff like that within a year or two. And then you find out the cutthroat, pretty pathetic stories of Mm. uh, these large firms and they just grind you until, you know. Mm. Wow. That's, that's, I've heard this story twice now. I'm still amazed by it. I was yeah, just like, wow, it's a, wow, it's a bummer when you graduate from college, you get a job, you, you get promoted, you're making a good salary and then you're like, wait. This is the rest of my life, really. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. And it's, and it's not like you weren't doing a job. You were just helping other people around you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. I don't get it. So you moved from there to a small accounting firm, and then I guess the luster of working for an accounting firm kind of wore off. Yeah. So how did you come around to the niche where you're working now with uh, designers? So it kind of happened uh, organically, and it was like fate. So after I left there, I worked for a firm of about three people. And it just so happened that the gentleman I was working for had a a relationship with a bookkeeper and she had referred probably like five to seven interior design firms in the Boston area. And so I, you know, because there was only three people, it was kind of like you are going to work on all of these people. And so 
um, I was on a contract basis by then, so the summer got quiet. And what we found was that a lot of the design firms would call in the summertime and say, you know, like, this report doesn't make sense, or we're not sure about this. So more of the traditional industries would kind of, you get the tax return done, they were happy, you didn't hear from until the next year. But the design firms were kind of like, hey, we need help with this, we need help with that. And I need money. So that's what kept me busy in the summertime. So I would go out, I'd go into South Boston, I'd like work at the design firms when I would show my face it would be like hey can you help me with this or can you help me with that and it just kind of snowballed into more and more work and I I was able to stay busy throughout the year that's terrific so you were actually able to do the thing that you were told not to do (laughs) at the big firm more help (laughs) right right? help people I mean (laughs) my god imagine that a CPA helping people so that's so you kind of organically fell into that and then I'm assuming eventually that became uh, self-sustaining where you were able to go out on your own. Yeah. Uh, and when did that happen? I went out on my own in 2015. So I moved back to Rhode Island, had surprise twins, and finding a house up in the Boston area was not affordable. So we moved back to Rhode Island. And so in order to do that and keep all my clients up in the Boston area, it had to be all kind of cloud-based. So sure. um, a lot of the designers were already using cloud-based software, so it was like a seamless, like no problem type of thing. And I, then I was just like boring old Peter Lang CPA business. <laughs> and that's when I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm bored with that. And I just, you know, I had read about niching and everything, and I was like, I really need to find a niche and, and uh, kind of shake it up a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're not, you know, boring old Peter Lang CPA. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I, and I first came across you uh, through a mutual friend uh, who pointed me to your website, and I was intrigued instantly by the way that you were positioning yourself. Now, you started working with interior designers, but have you started to pick up uh, other designers in the field, like graphic designers and uh, other people working in the design field? Yep, we work with any kind of designer out there. Um, it's just coincidence that um, we have a lot of interior designers, but that's our niche. We, we want to help all types of designers and with tax, accounting, cash flow needs and that kind of stuff. So, Like I said, I wish I knew you a few years ago. <laughs> but what are some of the unique things about working with designers or why, why did you gravitate that way and said, you know, I think I can really help these folks? Well, to be honest with you, how it all started was when I... I, I wanted a niche. Uh, I had read a book and someone said, you know, just don't even worry about what your clients do. Just look at the list of clients that you have and figure out, you know, who you get along with, who kind of needs you the most and who values the most, values you the most. And so when I got done with the list, six out of 10 were designers. Wow. Um, so I was like, well, there it is. It's right there in front of me. And I think that why that is, is just because just like I would be bad at designing anything because I'm more of a, a you know, accountant type of thing. The creative side of me isn't as strong as a designer. Uh, the financial side of a designer, usually they'll admit, they'll say, you know, I struggle with the finances part because I'm really good at the creative part. And so they, right. they have more questions throughout the year. They need more like help with cash flow and that kind of stuff where having being able to be available throughout the year and help with all sorts of different things just uh, allows me to give them more value than, you know, other types of industries. So when you were in the process of niching, because I've heard this even in my industry, so I'm in social media marketing and a lot of like my counterparts or other agency owners, they niche. They work with specific types of industries. However, it's kind of like FOMO, like fear of missing out. Like Mm -hmm. were you afraid you were going to alienate yourself or go to the wrong niche and miss out on you know, a large client in other industries. Mm-hmm. How was that process for you, I guess, in the like the mindset behind it? It is scary, scary to yeah. do. I think it's the probably the biggest reason why people don't do it. And it's still a fear. I mean, I don't think it ever goes away. It's just uh, what keeps me going and doing it is just the excitement of what's next. So after just making that decision of doing it and, and kind of marketing myself out there to say that I did it, like different doors have opened up that I didn't you know never even dreamed of so that that excitement is greater than the fear of missing out perfect that's awesome and in terms I had another question while you're speaking and let's see let's see if I can remember (laughs) in terms of niching do you feel so you're able to help them 
because you are more specific to their needs. Like it's what you do day in, day out. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're a CPA and it applies to a lot of businesses what you can do, but I guess when you niche, you're able to kind of just identify that specific industry to a greater level, like their specific needs is really the selling point, right? And it, it allows you to ask more questions that you wouldn't think of if you were working with everyone, I think. And, and then when you listen and you kind of, it, it opens up like, oh, you know, I never really thought about that, but you become more of an expert in, in their field and then you learn more about it as you're always learning about it. And then that kind of can open up different types of service that you can give to your niche. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of grows from there. So I love it. Yeah. And so when people, when you're getting new business in, is that like the attraction to working with you, your experience in that industry, they feel more secure? Uh, yeah, I think mm -hmm. um, so. It all started with uh, when I had the idea to niche, I went to the um, people that had worked on my original website and we kind of did that idea and that's how the process started. But I think just like with anything else in marketing and social media, if you have like a laser focus and you're, uh, you know what your, your target audience is, it's, you can kind of feel frustrated or you're not really sure if it's working. But when it does start working and it, it just like, it just solidifies it. And I think it, it makes it more exciting and that yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, you know, you made the right choice yeah, after things exactly. start to pay off. Like, yeah. Okay. I'm spending all this money. We're coming up with great ideas and it's working. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it, it is a nice feeling when it comes together like that. So in regards to marketing, um, you, you repositioned your website mm -hmm. uh, for your, your niche uh, target audience and you know you got yourself in a position to help designers so how else have you marketed yourself I know you've been on a lot of different podcasts including yep. ours so it all started I, I was fortunate enough I have there's uh, guys in Rhode Island from England studio and they're in my building they're all upstairs and we become friends and they worked on my website and so when I had the I had it over the summer the idea when I finally said I'm going to niche so I was able to just run upstairs and just be like, guys, <laughs> I'm going to need you to work on another website. And they're like, what's wrong? Because they had just finished my boring Peter Lang you know, website. They wouldn't say it's boring. Was that the actual URL, boring Peter yes, Lang? Yeah, absolutely. The boring CPA. Um, so they were like, what's wrong with the website? Because we just worked on it last year. And I'm like, no, no, it's OK. I just have come up with a completely different idea, completely different idea. And so they were able to kind of come up with uh, uh, like a template for a website that was more you wouldn't think it was an accountant. It was more of a design thing. So that helped. And then, you know, thinking about SEO and, and, all, and blog posts and all that stuff, that all happened. And then at the same time, Dave had um, told me about a company called Interview Connections, and they just so happened to be in Rhode Island as well. And they are podcast agents. So he said, you know, when you're ready, you really should, because I was talking about, you know, getting involved in like starting a podcast, even though it was a lot of work. But he was like, you know, you could also branch out with be, being on podcasts. And I thought that was great because, well, it was exciting. And podcasts are, uh, I think it's a great way to tell your story to different people. And they can hear, they can hear you talk and kind of get, without even contacting you, I think they can get an idea of whether or not it would, or an initial idea of whether or not it would be good to work with and work with that person. Yeah, we think so. So yeah, we're kind yeah. of fan of, yeah. fans big, of podcasts big fans here. Of podcasts, right? <laughs> so it's also helped me to tell my story and kind of practice, like what, and figure out what exactly do you want to do with this business? What do you want to, you know, what's the goal? So, mm -hmm. so this year, I've, uh, you know, after the website was all set and we started talking about social media and SEO and that kind of stuff, that's when I started to get out there on podcasts and be able to uh, just branch out and have people find me so. yeah yeah podcasts are it's another form of content and it's the fastest growing area of content along with video i guess it's right up there but podcasts now you can listen to them in your car like people mm -hmm. it's built in so definitely becoming more and more popular as the years go on along with being able to promote it on your social media just podcasts are versatile you can promote them through your email on your website so that's great that you've been on a few, I guess. Yeah, now, and huh? what, what's great is when, like, you know, that initial, you see that initial jump on your website or your um, Instagram or Facebook when the episode comes out, 
But what's pretty awesome is when it's been three, four, five months after an appearance and someone will contact you and be like, you know, I found this podcast and I started binge listening to every episode <laughs> and I heard your episode and I need an accountant. So it's like you pay to advertise almost. You pay someone to, or at least I did, I paid someone to get me out there on those podcasts where like you do a social media post or a billboard even or something like that and that kind of goes away. You never know. Like you paid for it and someone could hear it in a year or two and and contact Come back you. To so you. Yeah. Right. And plus pretty... it's, it's inbound. Like you said, they're ready to contact you. They've they've consumed a certain amount of information and now they're essentially a warm lead even though you mm. haven't ever spoken to them. They they have built, your, your podcast has built up credibility, I guess. Yep, they've yeah. been able to make a connection even though they've never met you. Before. Yeah, so I, we're big fans. So, yeah, well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> podcast. Yeah. So outside of podcasts, what other ways do you market yourself as, so, so I might be one of the only accountants that has like a very active Instagram page. Beca- and, and the reason why I did that was because I set up the Facebook and the Instagram at the same time, but I found that Instagram was growing more. And then I realized, okay, my niche d- is designers and having visual, more visual appealing posts and content uh, went went a bigger way than just like your standard boring like hey the new tax law came out guys <laughs> click on this link and you can read this whole 500 page thing I'm amazed <laughs> that you would even thought to do that because I would never put the two together and go I'll do an Instagram I don't know I'm, I'm imagining you sitting like in a big wing back chair with a smoking jacket on <laughs> and the new tax code in your lap oh, and yeah. doing like a dramatic reading you know I, yeah. I think Good yeah, evening. I think there's a built-in audience for that. And the Peter. best is when they release it like right on Christmas Eve day or something. So yeah, it's like perfect. There you too. Go. Yeah, you sit by yeah. a fireside. You yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, so, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to mean to sidetrack us there, but what are some examples of how you like what you post on Instagram? How do you use it to so, appeal to your niche? Yeah, so we, if you saw my Instagram feed, you would probably think I was an interior designer. So we literally started with just trying to find appealing things like an architectural digest or anything that we could find online, just amazing. I mean, cause I'm interested in, I know I can't design a house, but I'm interested enough to be able to be like, you know what, that came out really, that design came out really great. So we sure. just post that and give them credit and just be like, we think, we think this is awesome. That Beautiful. kind of stuff. Yeah. And so uh, I think more interior designers will follow that because they can see what other people in the country are doing and they know that it's not, inundated with with boring stuff. Right. I can somehow picture the designer going, yeah, I follow a CPA online and they show me all the latest stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, I was on <laughs> one podcast and she's like, and you can find out, and he's on Instagram. You're on Instagram. <laughs> Why? And then she got on and she's like, oh, guys, yeah, follow him. It's actually interesting. I thought it was going to be like pictures of calculators. And <laughs> As a side note, we will put your Instagram feed uh, link in our show notes so oh, that cool. people can check it out. Yeah. So there's two things that I'm at right now. So you're, you're, if you're listening to the podcast and you're, you're listening to Peter, he's a CPA and he caters to designers and you're saying, well, how does this apply to my marketing? And here's where I'm at. And you guys chime in or if you have any other kind of contribution or uh, point of view on it. But so niche is one. Mm-hmm. You have to decide who your customer is and then you have to get to know them. And this is something that we tell our social media clients when they're like, well, what social media channels do I use? There's Pinterest, there's Twitter, there's this, there's that. And ultimately, instead of speaking about yourself, speak the language of your clients to be able to attract them. And so part of that is under being able to put that message out there. Where are they? And Peter's clients live on Instagram yeah. because they are visual by nature. Mm-hmm. So even though a CPA is probably the farthest thing from a visual um, industry that, I mean, yeah, Yeah. it's pretty far from visual. Peter has found a creative way to make his business speak to the designers. He's speaking their language. And that's just, that's beautiful marketing, in my opinion. That's what marketing is. Well, we've talked, oh, I'm sorry, Bill. We've talked about this in previous podcasts, too, where you you brand yourself, right? And your, your customer is the hero of the story. So when you're branding yourself, you have to consider who they are. And because you have a niche market, it makes perfect sense for you to be on Instagram because your clientele are visual. And it's really not about you. I mean, yes, you help them, but the outcome is they're able to get the kind of financial assistance and help that they need to make them successful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's a differentiator for you because like you said, even when you were on that previous podcast, she's like, and he's on Instagram because CPAs aren't. And yeah. so you, you stand out and that's, that's awesome. That, that, that brings up another thing is uh, what we don't talk about much is 
thinking outside the box because quite frankly, that, that was out of the box thinking because who, who would think as a CPA, oh, I'm going to start an Instagram page. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's not something that you would normally think of. So bringing that back to regular marketing for, for everyone, think outside of what your normal market is. Mm-hmm. It may not be, you know, you may have a big Twitter following, but you might even do better on Instagram or on Facebook or, or, mm-hmm. or LinkedIn. Yeah. Don't be afraid to just try things out a little bit because I'm sure right. it was tri- a little bit of trial and error for you at first. Right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. I was going to say so you made the decision to use Instagram and it's working for you, but that's kind of making that decision like that's where my clients are, that's where I want to portray my business and connect with them. How did you plan that? How do you plan that out on a continued basis? Because step one, make the decision to, to, to use it. Step two, actually use it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so sure. how do you keep that so going? That's the secret. So uh, <laughs> my wife is really interested in the industry just Mm -hmm. so happens and so I kind of handed it off to her and was like you know I if if you want to help me with this you can go on and just find interesting designs and pictures and stuff and and then just just post them you know and um she was like I'm like and it would really help me a lot so she gets to kind of go look on the internet and find awesome design projects which is exciting to her and then um, it helps me to post it right? and do that. And I think that's another nugget of information right there, another nugget of advice. Like just because you're not, you can't see, you know, how to use a social media channel or a marketing channel or add that ability, that creative kind of um, layer to it, delegate, mm-hmm. delegate it. Just like you would delegate doing your books or doing your taxes. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> like right. find someone who's good at it. And and luckily for you, your wife yeah. is. <laughs> so that's and awesome. It, it's good because she'll, we'll, kind of look at it and know it and like that continuous posting like if a couple of days go by it'll just be like oh we gotta you know we gotta make sure that we come up with an idea and keep going with the posting because in my industry it can get hard like tax season rolls around and then a lot of accounts will be like well i can't deal with marketing and that kind of stuff and until tax season's over but then you go you go dark for a couple of months and you don't want to do that either so having help and knowing that they're going to continuously do that if you forget is is it's great. Do you do you have a social media calendar? Like, do you plan it out at all, or no? But I should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody can help you with that. <laughs> Who could that be? Yeah, we, we have a podcast on that actually, too. I think coming up or something, yeah. but planning. Yeah. But yeah. I think I mean you've been able to keep it going, and that that's the other part of social media is one you make the decision to use it, you have a plan, but the dedication, like keeping it rolling, because sometimes it can become little tedious or just like oh we, like you said oh we gotta get something up there we haven't posted and yep, yep. yeah another another thing to just do within your business so but yeah i read a, a back to what you're saying before i read a book and um i can't remember who said it but they basically said it's not about you when you're when you're doing those posts like the customer mm-hmm. you want to you want to talk as if you're the customer and mm-hmm. i think that's a lot of times people like make that mistake that thinking about like what do i need what do i need but if you want a niche and you you figure out what your customers need, that's you should, you should be. That's yeah, every. I post. agree. I think we talked about that not too long ago, where we talked about the fact that as business owners, we get kind of myopic sometimes mm-hmm. and, and think about just what we know, and we think everybody wants to know what we know, and it's not always just mm-hmm. that simple because we may know something that means nothing to a client, but if we listen truly listen to them, you'll end up getting some information. They go, "Oh, I can help there. I can help there," but you don't realize it without listening. Yeah. No, we've talked about that several times in regards to branding and marketing Mm -hmm. is focusing on the client and what their needs are. Um, And it's easy to to forget, you know, because we think, oh, well, you know, I've got all this experience. I've got all this expertise. You know, once I put this out there, people, they'll realize just how (laughs) wonderful I am and they'll hire me. And it's like, "Mm, it doesn't really work that way. (laughs) It'd be nice if it did. but Yeah. Yeah. So... That's great that, you know, you've discovered this in with Instagram, you know, and it obviously makes you unique. I can't, I mean, have you ever like taken a look to see if there's any other CPAs on Instagram or? No, actually I haven't. <laughs> oh, you, to do a search for that one. You may have there. cornered the market. <laughs> I know that there's been a couple of bookkeepers that have tried to follow me for a little while. And then I notice that they unfollow me because... <laughs> oh. They're probably like thinking like, oh, cool, I'm going to follow all the accountants and it's going to be everything I love, you know, percentages, calculators, all this stuff. And <laughs> they keep seeing like awesome designed rooms. And right. They're probably like, eh. That's not what I was looking yeah, for. Right so you said your wife has an interest in 
interior design it just as like a hobby or yeah yeah okay. i always tell her she could probably go to school and probably become an interior designer nice. so nice. Well, i was going to ask you how many times have you redecorated your house oh yeah no i mean <laughs> small little things oh, okay. it hasn't been <laughs> little steps right yeah um, yeah we need a bigger budget so. yeah <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, well, especially if you get twins. I, yeah. I can vouch for that because I have twins myself. So Yeah, yeah. There's not enough, there's not a lot of extra disposable income around no, to, no. you know, to do stuff. But, but. Yeah, unlike HGTV where they do the house over, overnight just, in unlimited. We just keep that on loop all day long, HGTV. <laughs> you What's go. your favorite show on HGTV? I like all the, um, the ones, the Hawaii one, just because, you know, yeah. it's a dream. It's oh, not New England where it's snowing. <laughs> exactly. No, usually the the New England like the lakefront shows and that kind. Of, I'm like, yeah, that's. I guess I'm crazy. I kind of like the Four Seasons, but. I like the Property Brothers. I, I wouldn't mind having a house with only three sides, you know, and um, one that's just completely oh, open to the like, elements. Yeah. What do you want to lean to? Well, yeah. cause, no, like when you're in Hawaii and stuff, you can sure. do that. You know, you just have something that's completely yeah, yeah, yeah. open, and you know, it's not around here. No. You know, <laughs> and maybe like one here. month out of the year. And with cloud-based technology now it's like a dream like someday like you know everyone's going to be on the cloud and i can be sitting on the beach and working and it won't matter there you go there you uh, go i'm trying to figure out how i can get mine to cloud no cloud no now. not yet no but the nice thing about that is i can just have them hire me to travel right oh yeah sure yeah. sure, sure. Anyone wants to send me to hawaii i'll, I'll, I'll go right. there you go. <laughs> not a problem well you know a lot of interior designers need photographers this is true i could so. do that I, I can you know do some drone fun stuff in the house too sure yeah. Sure. So just to kind of <laughs> recap what we talked about today, don't be afraid of looking for that niche market. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like you did, you know, look at the clients that you're serving. Look at the ones that you really enjoy working with and the ones that you can help the most. And don't be afraid to narrow down that focus because as you found out when you do, it actually opens up a lot of possibilities. Right. So if like this is something that happens a lot of the time when I sit down with a new prospect or a new client and we say, who, who is your customer? And they say, everyone. everyone. Mm-hmm. And then it's no one. Well, you know, the, pro- the problem is a lot of, I, I'm, I'm victim of this at some points, is you get so, I need to, I need to serve everybody because I need to bring in clients and I need to have those clients. And to try to narrow it down to a small niche, you start thinking to yourself, well, if I narrow it down to that niche, I'm not going to get near enough clients. So a lot of my clients do the same thing, much like what you're talking about. Well, I serve everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're right. You end up serving nobody if you don't I get mean, that chance. I mean, it could come down to having a couple different buckets, I think, too. Yeah. Like, it oh, doesn't yeah. have to be, like, you know, super, super specific. It could be a specific or broad, but, like, some type of definition oh, is right. going to help you. And so we call them personas. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, because if you're a restaurant, obviously, you're going to have a broader audience, but... Um, just like a great example of that would be, so they everybody eats food. That's just how it is. Yeah. So they have a pretty broad audience. However, um, one of the particular restaurants that we work with, they have a really big vegetarian and vegan following. So mm. we make sure to cater to them. Sure. Literally cater. But also like <laughs> on social, they do do catering. I know. On social media, <laughs> like to have posts that speak to them. And every time we target that that audience on social media, they do do better because the the vegan and vegetarian community in Rhode Island is really big. It's large, but also it's for them. And they, they, they pick up on that. It's not just like, Hey, we're here and, you know, come in and eat. It's like, we have specials for, for, you know, meatless Monday and stuff like that. It's a great example of of niche marketing. really. Right. So no matter how broad your, your business is, you could be an HVAC, you could be in, um, you know, an agency setting like I am, you can still define your audience and I think have more success with, you know, just kind of narrowing it down. And, sure. and Peter's gone to the extreme narrowing of his audience and, and niched very specifically. And it's, you know, his marketing awesome. kind of mirrors that, which gives him results. Right. So in addition to the niche marketing, also look to what your client's interests are and mm-hmm. where they operate and mm-hmm. market to that, um, which you've done on Instagram. So I think that's those two things uh, are some really good takeaways uh, for us today in regards to, to marketing and even to branding, you know, how you positioned yourself in the market. So really appreciate you yes. coming in and talking to us, Peter. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks. And you're no, definitely no. not boring. No, no, no I agree. Now, if somebody <laughs> wanted to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, so my website's thedesignercpa.com, and I am on Instagram at thedesignercpa, and we're on Facebook as well at thedesignercpa. Nice, nice. We'll put all those in the show notes. but Absolutely. So I guess with that, we'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.